Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Many modern web applications are moving to NoSQL databases. Now, with that, there are some new threats that you need to be aware of. Boyan has a nice diary today that builds on a talk that he gave at Sans Fire explaining how to attack these NoSQL databases. Now, with SQL injection, an attacker is typically able to rewrite SQL commands. NoSQL works a little bit different. You typically can't easily rewrite commands as you can do with SQL. But on the other hand, you're typically dealing with complex data types. The example that Boyan here has is JSON. And then by using JSON tricks, it is often possible to have the input misinterpreted and essentially go back to what you had with a SQL injection just now with no SQL databases. And you are then able to retrieve data that you weren't supposed to retrieve or even update data that you weren't supposed to be able to update. So pretty interesting diary, I think pretty cutting edge stuff that Boyan is doing here. If you are using any of these NoSQL databases, in particular the ones that deal directly with JSON data, then take a look at his diary. Yesterday I talked about how a developer for the Copyfish extension in Google Chrome fell for a phishing attack. And as a result, his Google developer account was hijacked and the extension replaced with adware. Apparently, this wasn't the only extension that happened to the very popular web developer toolbar also was replaced with adware yesterday. So if you have that installed, make sure that you have the uninfected, the clean version installed. Apparently in this case, the developer was able to get his account back and that particular extension should be okay now. And Kaspersky is writing about further developments with Android banking malware. The latest case that they discovered was a further development of the SVPeng Trojan. That particular Trojan has been known for a while now, actually for a couple of years, uh, to attack Android users and to try to interfere with online banking applications. This latest version has a new trick up its sleeve. Uh, when you install it and that's how usually the application gets on the user system. It's not a vulnerability, but the user installs what they believe is a benign application. Well, uh, when you install it, it asks for the accessibility privileges. Now, not many users may really understand what this means. Accessibility is usually used in order to provide assistive keyboards and the like for users with disabilities. But what this really accomplishes is that the software is now able to inject itself into all input provided to any application on the system. So in this case, the malware is now able to actually capture keystrokes that a user enters as they're using an online banking application. And of course, then these keystrokes like usernames and passwords are being captured and forwarded to the attacker. The attacker is also able to inject their own keystrokes, of course, or make further modifications to the system. According to Kaspersky, only a few instances of this malware have been seen so far. Be careful where you install your software from for Android. That's probably the number one thing to keep in mind with this malware. And even if you do download software from the Google Play Store, make sure that the privileges it's asking for are making sense. And Amazon took the unusual step to stop selling smartphones from the Chinese manufacturer, Blue. 
The smartphones are usually selling for less than $100 and apparently are sending user data to a collection site without informing the user. They also tend to inject advertisements, but apparently the main reason why Amazon did stop selling these phones was that they are not complying with their own privacy policy by sending user data back to the factory. Well, that is it for today. Thanks and for listening. Just as a reminder, if you like this podcast, tell your friends, colleagues, social media about it, and leave a good review on various podcast sites. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.